how heartwarming it was to see all of the Spotify wrapped like mm-hmm. pop it was listeners. So cute. It was That's really cool. cool. Like, especially because you know, we obviously have a handful of episodes, but other other podcasts have been around for yeah, the like we year. just started. So True. it's really cool. I that- didn't even think about that. Yeah, I mean, your mom even said it too. That's kind of what made me think of it. I was like, oh, the fact that we're like on some people's like top podcasts is like a big deal. Yeah, um, like imagine next started. year. Yeah. Ooh, next That'll year's cool. gonna be a good one. I'll have For to start sure. listening to them on Spotify instead of Apple. <laughs> um, yeah. On the toast yesterday, they talked. I know. I would literally. I decided this yesterday that I'm gonna switch all my podcast listening to Spotify because I usually do on Apple. Besides Armchair Expert on Spotify but um on the toast yesterday they talked about Spotify released all their metrics for their top podcasts and everything Uh and it was just so interesting to hear their side of things and like because they also got their own podcast wrapped and like Claudio was reading all of those so it's just interesting they didn't share Spotify um the top ones Emma Chamberlain's was like number two or three which is crazy because they just picked her up or she wasn't a Spotify exclusive podcast until like this month so that's crazy that she was in the top and then joe rogan i think was number one what i know armchair expert was like 13 or something which is what is caller daddy up there yes caller daddy was number two that's so and the chamberlain was number three i every podcast wrapped i saw had armchair expert on it every single one so like (laughs) that's weird to me that they're not in the top five that's interesting what were like four, five, and six? I don't recall. I just remember the top three. Yeah. That's crazy. Um, I don't know what the hell just happened, but I have like this insane like respiratory thing. So if I like what do pause, you mean? I'll be like hacking up a lung. <laughs> oh my gosh. Do you think it's from your sickness? I I feel like it's new. I like I was healed. I was like good. And I was feeling great, like like pneumonia, e like stuff in your lungs. Oh my God, I mean? hope it's not fucking pneumonia. Maybe it's just from your cold. Did you have like a your was your nose? Did you have congestion in your nose and stuff when you were sick? Yeah, because like that if was you like, like, that was like uh, almost three weeks ago, right? Yeah, but, but maybe all lasting. that stuff that you like swallowed and stuff is like now getting pushed out of your lungs or something. I don't know. I'm not a doctor. Oh my God. <laughs> Yeah, I don't know. It's painful though. I was like, Ugh. I don't I'm know. Sorry. Anyways, that sucks. But that's like if I pause. Um, okay, you're just good. Heads up. Welcome back to another episode. Of so glad we're friends. I'm Maggie. I'm Devin. I'm Brittany. <laughs> By the way, my mom keeps calling you Maddie. Really? Yes, I keep saying it's Maggie, mom. Oh my god, okay. That's like been a problem my entire life. Really? <laughs> I just like kind of go with it usually when people say Maddie. <laughs> the one with the cute voice? Yeah, mom, that's Maggie. <laughs> Maggie. She's like, no, Maddie. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's Maddie, right? And I always have friends named Maddie too. So it uh-huh. like I don't know. I've just I've dealt with that my entire life. It's well. usually either that, they're like Maddie, or they say, My dog's name is Maggie. <laughs> and I'm like, cool. <laughs> What do you like? How are you supposed to respond to that? I'm I'm like cool. I love dogs. Awesome. <laughs> you know, Devin is a brand of meat in Australia. So when I went to Australia, I felt and it was spelled the same way that my name spelled. Like I felt oh, and so it's like really popular. Weird. Yeah, weird. introducing myself as Devin because like oh my god, it's so awkward. Did people like make comments about it? I think a few people. That's why I knew that it oh. was a meat brand or whatever. <gasps> <That's funny. laughs> That's crazy. (laughs) Okay. Well, today we're going to be talking about all things dog parenting. Um, We asked for some of your guys' questions and you guys sent in a ton of questions. So thank you so much. This is the most questions we've ever gotten. So we're definitely going to have to do a part two of this episode and just more episodes on dog parenting things because it's a hot topic. (laughs) I know everyone's so passionate about their dogs. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. I also think it's like nice that people want to like learn you know how to be better dog parents or just like get assistance or like be part of the community in some capacity like for sure yeah 
knowing that they're not alone. Yeah. It's like so overwhelming for when you first get a dog that I'm sure for people with new puppies or just new dogs in general, it's like you just want any information you can get. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. So we're going to be answering some of your questions. And then you guys also submitted some things that you wish you would have known, things you've learned since being a dog parent and stuff. So we'll go over those also. Okay. What should we start with? Mine? (laughs) Yes. What is your face? (laughs) I'm trying to pick up the energy. (laughs) I know. I do feel like I have lower energy right now. I've had two meetings already today. That's gonna be yeah that's a lot of talking my introverted self is dying a little okay yeah you maybe need to like blast some music or something for a second <laughs> Pump no, up. okay first question what's it like living with a corgi versus other breeds why did you each choose the breed that you went with what's it Devin, like you want to start well, <laughs> i don't know what it's like living with a corgi i feel like i ha- I did kind of get lucky with Willow because she's very chill and I just want to emphasize that like corgis typically are really high energy because they're working dogs, they're herding dogs. So they typically need a job and they get overweight easily if they're not active enough. And i like just got so lucky with Willow. I feel like a lot of people don't know that about corgis. Like corgis don't I did not seem that, that way from the outside. Like I didn't know that corgis were working dogs. Exactly. Instagram. People have no idea about corgis and the amount of people that think corgis are supposed to be fat. Like why would any yeah. dog, not to get into a tangent, but like obviously <laughs> I haven't had any other dogs, but like my family members have dogs. Um, I think the difference with having a corgi versus other dogs is they're very stubborn um, they are very food driven. So like Willow will not listen to me unless she knows I have a treat. And if I do, then she'll do whatever I want. But she's like, uh, no, you don't have a treat. I'm not going to listen to you. Um, she's really loud, which is another thing about Corgi and herding dogs in general. They're very vocal. Um, and then they also you have to be careful about their bodies and like health mm. problems because they have short legs and such long backs. It just always like. There's a back have, like, problems common. All of the um, back problems are really you common. You have like all the stairs in your house. Yeah. And like I, I even like... feel guilty sometimes not having stairs for my couch. Not that yeah. Willow would use them because she doesn't want to. But like I, I yell at her every time she jumps off my bed because just that like pressure in her short little arms in her shoulders is just yeah. not good for her body. So they're kind of a lot. I don't even know what a good first time dog would be though. But, like, they're a lot of work, I guess. Yeah, I feel like Aussies are very similar to what you just described. I don't know if that's because they're both herding dogs or whatever, but it's the yeah. same problems of food-driven, stubborn, herding, barking. Smart, yeah. Smart, yeah. All those same things and lots of energy. And I think I also lucked out, um, especially Finley, is a lot more low energy. And Sadie's nice. able to be calm. Like, she has the high energy all the time. But, like, if we're chilling, then she knows we're chilling. That's good. Probably because she had Finley as an example. Yeah. Also, that that's just so good. true. But it's funny because we, like, got her for him to play with. And then he's like, I don't want to play with you. I'm trying to he's nap. Like, I'm good. <laughs> yeah. That's how Willow would be now. Yeah. But, Britt, you have, like, the dog breed that everybody thinks everybody is, wants. like, the best breed. So how do you feel about that? How is Rosie? So the way that we kind of decided on a golden retriever was like the trainability, like companianship and um, just the to the temperament and loyalty. Got, what? Loyalty. Everybody's, you know, comparing yeah. loyalty to golden retrievers. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I would say they're pretty loyal. They like are so. And so like when we were looking, I actually found like a therapy dog breeder. So she like breeds those traits um, oh, cool. into the dogs. Yeah, that's also so important. Is the temperament gets passed down in their genes? Yeah, which a lot of people don't realize. Yeah, I didn't. And there's like you know different breeders, and she like I I feel very lucky because I truly didn't know what I didn't know, but my breeder was really on top of it and like did puppy socialization or like what is it puppy culture? I think is the like mm-hmm. uh kind of like course or like structure that they can follow um and just like taught us so much about the breed um I feel like you know there's a lot of things I didn't know about when it came to training like 
we got rosy in the middle of the pandemic. So like we, and I always like to say this, we put the deposit down on her in January before the pandemic happened (laughs) and she just happened to be born in March. And then we got her in May. You didn't um, just get bored and then pick up a puppy. No. <laughs> we like plan we had we had a plan. And I think I even like called around and like was researching in like December, like November time frame. And then January, I was like, okay, found the breeder. Let's go. Um, but I I truly didn't understand like the importance of like structure. And I guess going back, like because it was in the middle of the pandemic, we were like fully planning on taking our like puppy classes and all the different training things, but obviously they like didn't really have them and so we were like oh but we're at home like we'll just do our own training but I didn't know what I was doing and so you know she kind of got some anxious tendencies just because we like didn't have the structure in the house Mm -hmm. um but I think golden retrievers obviously like do have a lot of energy as well um and they are very mouthy so that's like a thing to just be like and it's like you know in the breed like retriever I was going to say, like, what mm-hmm. are the, like, retrieving, like, annoying behaviors or, like, things that – They just, like, like I feel like I don't hear a lot. Use their <laughs> mouth a lot. So okay. they're, like, always trying to, like, put things in their mouth. They're trying to, like, teeth And, like, beyond, like, just regular puppy teething. My sister's golden does that, and it's so cute. Like, she, just, like, grabs your arm, like, with her mouth. My sister's dog <laughs> does that, but she's not a golden retriever at all. She's Is an she Australian shepherd poodle. Oh. Well, it could That's be the Aussie, honestly. They're a little mouthy. <laughs> yeah. So those are the things that, like, I feel like. But I we really chose Rosie, like, in the breed just because of the um, trainability and, like, loyalty and good temperament. Overall. Yeah. So somebody said when we're talking about herding dogs, somebody said, advice for barking and nipping at heels. I know with herding dogs, this can be really difficult, but how long will this and the puppy phase last? Particularly the barking and nipping at feet. <laughs> Um, I, you know, when, um, women who have a child, they talk about their birth story and like when it was (laughs) happening, it was horrible. But then once it's over and you have that baby, you kind of forget forget. how horrible it was (laughs) Yeah, and you're like ready to do it again. Yeah. That's how I feel Willow's puppyhood was (laughs) because I do remember being very frustrated a lot. Like she would just, when she wanted attention, she would sit down on the ground while I was watching TV and just bark at me over and over again. But Same, like I forgot about that until somebody said that about their corgi, and I was like, "Oh wait, Willow did do that." Yeah, Rosie like, would do that know. too, and we like almost we didn't like encourage it, but like we definitely didn't do the right things to like stop it. So then it just continued. Yeah, because because she like didn't have any. Them. Yeah, yeah, that's what I was but gonna it's say. So hard for the barking and demand barking. It was like we rewarded it almost like mm-hmm. when he because was a puppy. Gave attention. Yeah, because it's so automatic. Like if you're sitting and watching TV or something and then you they, you hear them whine or bark, then it's like automatic to reach over and start petting them or like ask them what they want or anything. Yeah. So learning to like not even give eye contact uh-huh. and like our trainer told us to wait like 10 seconds at least or something before like while he's being quiet before then giving That's him smart. attention because then it's rewarding the good behavior rather than the bad. But with nipping, he never, Sadie never did anything. Sadie doesn't have any behavioral problems of that. She has like socialization issues, but she never like nipped or like was bitey that I remember. Um, I wonder if if again, that's because she had Finley. I think so. Like literally he potty trained her in one day. Like she was using the doggy door on the first day that like she was home and she had maybe one or two accidents the whole entire time. It was very crazy. Um, but with nipping, like, I don't, I don't even remember. Or do you also ignore that? (laughs) Yeah. Um, I have like a couple of tricks for that, that, but I, well, this is, we need a trainer on here because like, I I learned a couple of tricks, but like a disclaimer (laughs) that we are not trainers or vets or any sort of dog experts. We are just your internet besties. Like literally my one blog post that took off was how to train your corgi not to bite and so there are like a few tips that i have but i really don't think any of them worked for willow so what is one of them and then people can check out your Um, blog oh so one big one is kind of like uh pretending that you're also a dog because they learn how hard not to bite uh when they're playing with other dogs like 
that's how they learn how hard they can bite. And so what you want to do in their psyche is to make a really loud yelp and then ignore them for a few minutes or a few seconds. So that's how they learn with other puppies that like, oh, that was too hard and I can't keep playing with them if I bite them that hard. Yeah. But also they just grow out of it and you just have to remember yeah. that. I remember I, I did that we, too. We always had like a lot of chew things or like toys readily available to try and like stick it in their mouth, right? Stick when it in their start. mouth or just like just kind of distract them and like move it away, move it away from them. Mm-hmm. Um and I know that's not like always the case for people, but and because to stop we were home like so much, it was easier to kind of regulate. Yeah. My trainer gave me a tip that a lot of people have actually liked is just buying big whole carrots and freezing it and give mm. them that to chew on. I've heard that too. Um, That's a really like that. good Because it's not too hard on their teeth like some chews are. it's not are. expensive. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I Okay. I love Benabone, but I didn't realize how expensive they were. Like Because oh, we've never had to buy them. I've bought them myself, but I like just – I guess I never paid attention to the price tag. I just thought they were like $5 or $10 or something. I love them. I think they're worth it, but I just like was shocked by the price tag. They when always the make me day. nervous just with like knowing dogs have fractured their teeth on them or cracked their teeth. Yeah, I recently decided I'm throwing away all of them. Yeah. Um, but for the nipping at heels and stuff, this it'd be the same thing of like replacing it with a toy or choosing or carry it or whatever and like staying in place. Like don't be running around the house yeah, to get away moving. from them because then you're like a toy to them and they're trying to chase you and get you. <laughs> so just like stop moving and ignore them and give them a toy instead. That actually reminded me, um, Maddie from My Boy Runner did give me this tip because like my one of my friends, um, was telling me like his dog was like nipping at his like calves would just like come and like attack his calves and like bite oh it. He's gosh. like, how the hell do I stop this? And um, one of the things is just like creating structure so that they mm-hmm. like you're training like place and you're training like going to their bed or like enjoying their crate time um, so that they know like, okay, this is enough. And I think that's a good one. That's like also goes back to like the structure thing that I wish I did more of. Um, I think that goes back to the barking and the biting and the whining too, like creating mm-hmm, a structured yeah. playtime with your toys. It's like having a freaking toddler, yeah. but like they, here's your playtime. You're going to play with your toys. I'm going to play with you with the rope and the toy or whatever. And then you're going to go back into your place and chill there for a while. Yeah. Place training, I feel like was the biggest life changer aspect in making the structure. Yeah. Yeah. And I, so we have that like bed that has a bunch of the like bumpers around it mm-hmm. and that was helpful, but we just got, and I know a lot of people like using the raised beds mm-hmm. and we just got one. And I think it does actually make a difference. Like I was like, Oh, I, I don't need to buy that or whatever, mm-hmm. but I think it actually does make a difference and it helps a lot. Yeah. Yeah. I can yeah. See that. All the trainers use them. So yeah. Cause it just creates more separation from like the ground and yeah. like um, the bed and like where they have to stay. <laughs> Okay. Um, what were your experiences with finding your training styles, balance, positive, et cetera? And how has that training style worked for you and transformed your dog? Um, well, I can say I had a I got to a point where I had to hire a trainer because Willow's resource guarding got so bad, like I couldn't handle it myself. And I experienced a trainer with a I don't even know what her training style is. Maybe you guys would know, but it's like not the alpha style, but kind of pretending you're their mom dog in a way. <laughs> I've what? never heard of that. I think it is like alpha theory, actually, <laughs> because it was like, you know, you can't, they can't go through the doorway before you and they're not allowed on the furniture. And, but one thing that she taught me was I'm whenever Willow's doing something. <laughs> <laughs> well, so what their moms do to them when they're misbehaving is they like, make this noise at them and so she like taught me to make this noise at wait can you make it (laughs) so it's like "Ah, ah." (laughs) but i end up being like "Ah!" (laughs) like i get so mad at her but i don't just talk about how (laughs) it is so freaking hard to like learn these like new like 
techniques or like behaviors and stuff like it truly is like just training the human and not oh my god it's so the dog is. like I there's like this timing thing that we're working on right now and I just fuck it up every time like I can't mm. for me the timing is just like way off and I'm like am I ever gonna learn this yeah Same. it's always the human that's screwing up not the dog yeah it's not the dog's fault but anyways I really d- oh so she like gave me these bags with chains in them and like when (laughs) willow would bark at the door she would say to throw it at the door like throw it close to them because it scares them and makes them stop and so i found one of these chain bags in my hall closet recently and as soon as i like touched it and it made a little noise willow went running and hid like in my closet so like i i don't still work with her but obviously that was a horrible training experience for Willow and a horrible training method, you know? Yeah. Like oh my any God. like anytime trying to use fear to get them to do something is just making them like I feel like it's damaging them more. Maybe that's why Willow's afraid of loud noises now because of that. Yeah. Oh my gosh. That is so, so crazy. I have never heard of How that. How did you like crazy. find your trainer though? Like it was recommended I, from a girl who was in a corgi group that I was in. Okay. Because that's like, I I didn't really know like what to look for in a trainer. And so we like tried positive reinforcement like only to begin with. And then we tested another trainer that like it wasn't really like, a good fit for Rosie. Um, that was like more balanced training. But because she like didn't have the foundational things set, the balance component of it like didn't really work on her. She was just like kind of shut down and like just was doing things out of like, oh, fuck, like, just don't do anything to me. And then now we're doing like more relationship-based balance training. So it's like really like focusing on the foundational things again, building like engagement. So like she looks at us and like wants to work for us kind of. Yeah. I like the relationship building thing because if your dog wants to be near you, that's the best thing. Like, yeah, that helps in so many Scaring scenarios. your dog is not – I just don't see the value in that at all. It's just making your dog fearful and reactive. Yeah. 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 But um, you have a trainer too, Maggie. Yeah. So when we first started out, uh, we did one of those like six-week pet co classes – Mm-hmm. and me too <laughs> <laughs> like I don't it was okay I guess I don't know I think I it was also... just for I wanted the experience like I always wanted so to I. do that with a puppy same and also it was just good uh socializing for Willow yeah yeah it was it was good I liked it and our trainer was nice and everything but I think that my biggest problem was that I well like I I loved the training and stuff and I thought like oh I'm so good at this like I can do it myself and I can do these things right and make him into the best dog and blah 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 and I think I did things good but like there was a lot of things that I just messed up on and just like literal just such tiny things that made such a big difference changing like the biggest thing was like say I would tell him to sit I would mm-hmm. say sit and then he would do it and then he'd like immediately give up get up and I'd give him the treat once he mm-hmm. got up instead yeah. of giving it to him once he sat and then making him sit until he was released. So the biggest thing I think is like that every command now they have to stay in that command until they're released. Like when mm-hmm. before I would get I would reward them just for doing it. Um yeah. and then like the release itself is the reward now. So basically, yeah, we did the six weeks class. Then we went through like a, a year or something where Sadie started having more behavioral issues and Finn is very stubborn and doesn't really listen. And I felt like those things were like messed up. There was a lot of like just behavioral <laughs> problems. Like they were just being so annoying and like demanding and not listening. And we had like no structure and it was like causing fights between me and Cameron and stuff. And I was like, I'm finding a trainer. Yeah. Um, so I looked up like also that was well, we'll go into because somebody had a question about disagreeing with like co-parenting type things. But that was a like disagreement for us because I wanted the more positive training. And he was like down for balanced and down for like using an e-collar and stuff. And not that I wasn't. 
I wasn't not down for it. Like I didn't think it was bad or anything, but I just like wanted to do positive first or I wanted to learn more about it and talk to different trainers. Um, but it happened that the first trainers that we found, I like love them so much. And we did like basic manners classes basically with both of them. So that was like each six weeks. And then we did some private classes, like lessons for Sadie for her barking, which helped a ton. And then we did their CGC classes, the canine good citizen. So they got that. And then now I just like text the trainer whenever I have a problem because like so many of those concepts that you learn, like then get applied to anything. So like a lot of the times when there's a new problem that comes up or they're struggling, it's usually, I know it's something that I'm messing up on or like not maintaining the structure consistency. And then I'm like, yeah. okay, this is what my trainer would say. Yeah. Kind of like a therapist. Totally. <laughs> I would definitely, if I got another dog, I would just go with a training course with an actual trainer like you did for like the second Dang. time instead of yeah. going to Petco or PetSmart because you get the same experience when you're in a group class like that. Mm-hmm. And it's just more, uh, I don't know. Yeah, they're just more. I'm mean, yeah, they're more. And I'd then like you can build a relationship up. with them and continue to work with them and stuff. I would literally set up the first like training session like before I even got the dog home. Like, yeah, yeah, just being like fully ready for it. Yeah, I would recommend like even if you think that you've done your training research and you can do it yourself and stuff, like I would highly recommend just putting that into your budget before getting a dog. And deciding how much that will be and accounting for random private training sessions or something that might come up throughout the years too. Like yeah, training and- is a thing that's forever, not just like the first year, which is something that I thought it was. <laughs> yeah. Oh, consistency. Because <laughs> as they get older, they get worse, honestly. Literally. And yeah, I people always ask when I should start training, like today, when you bring the puppy home <laughs> or dog, whatever. I mean, if you're yeah. adopting, but. So that was another question is like, what is um, the first things that you think are important to train with your dog? I think waiting to eat until they're allowed. Uh, I definitely would have crate trained Willow and like made it a safe space for her because that's going to help with separation anxiety and all that stuff as well. Mm -hmm. And just like your basic manners, like place and stay and you know, it's fun when you have a puppy to start with all that stuff. I just, I would just start with all the basics right away. Yeah. This is where like, I think all the different, there's like so many different trainers that have different opinions on this too, of like what you should start with. Mm -hmm. Um, I am really happy that we did like crate training and we like, like our breeder did a lot of like socialization and like exposure to the crate. So Rosie just needed like two nights to adjust to it. And then she was like, fine. Um, and like it yeah. became her safe, happy place that she That's would just good. default to. And I would have done more like engagement, like relationship building stuff. So like just recognizing, like making eye contact, like, you know, yeah. like, coming to me naturally, um, learning her name. Yeah, that's what I was going to say, like the relationship stuff and their name, like I would focus way more on that the first several months of like every day inside the house, like come and their name, because that's like the most important thing. And that is like, there's so many dangerous scenarios you can get in where you need them to come to you when you call them. And that, that's probably like the most serious and necessary command. Yeah, uh, I have a really good trick for come that has changed how Willow's recall is. And I this would be good to start from puppyhood as well. But like there's obviously the come when it's not an emergency. But when there is an emergency using a different word and when you practice that, give them like the highest value treat that you have and only give them that treat when they come to you when you say that word. So my word with Willow is target. And, but I say it like in a high pitched voice. So anytime, like if I'm at the park and I throw her ball and then she sees another dog and she starts running towards it. If I say target, she turns around and always comes to me. And that's that's so so important. Like if they run out into the street or, you know, just like having someone whose emergency word is Beyonce. (laughs) That's cute. Yeah. Like just having a different word that is not typically in your normal vocabulary. So when they hear it, they know like oh, I'm going to get a really good treat. I have to listen to this, you know? Uh Uh-huh. And I think that's also where we want to, like, 
say that every single dog is so different and like you cannot pick one training style or one method that will work for every single dog. Like even me just having two dogs, they're so different. And the way that you talk to them and try to train them works so differently. So like my trainer told me specifically not to do the emergency word thing because like Finley's so freaking stubborn. If I did that, he won't come the other times. Like he would only come if using the emergency situation word. Mm -hmm. So like for what she told us, which has helped a ton is like not saying, not calling him or telling him to come unless I know that he's going to almost, which is a lot in a lot of cases. That's what she says is like setting them up for success and like not even allowing them to get to that bad behavior. But like oftentimes like he'd be, say we're out in the field and he's like sniffing around doing his own thing or sees another dog. If I'm like, come, come Finley, come come oh hi (laughs) he's coming (laughs) (laughs) um like if I'm doing that and he's not then I'm just like repeating the command over and over again and he's not listening and then that's just showing him like that it's not serious so I try now to like do it once he's looking at me and paying attention and then I only say it once and then from there like if he's not or if he's going slow or something then I just try to make sounds or like show him the tree or whatever so then he does it but it's just so interesting like how different methods work for different dogs I think I had to change the recall word because I had already ruined Willow you know so we needed like her recall was not good and I needed something new to introduce to her to get her to be excited to come to me I guess yeah the other thing too is so we especially for like recall stuff we definitely like use the e-caller as kind of like a safety belt Mm -hmm. um but I think it's obviously this like goal to have your dog be able to like run free and like enjoy their life and stuff, but it's okay to use a long line for as long as you need until you have like a reliable recall. Oh, I always use one of those. Yeah. Um, because I think there's, you know, you just see stuff like all over social media, like just in case my dog is off leash. Like my dog does this and that, whatever. And like, you have no idea like the type of training that they've done beforehand, but I think there's no shame. And like it should be encouraged to use a long line until yeah your dog gets it. Definitely. I have way too much anxiety to not because I've had experience experiences where Willow gets scared or something, and if she if they start running, you can't catch up to them. I know. So like having that leash to be able to step on and or something is just like reassuring. Yeah, for sure. It's very helpful. Although if your dog starts running from you, do not chase them. Try to oh like God, yes, I run turn around and run direction. the other way. Yes. Yeah. Or like <laughs> yeah. one time I threw Willow's ball to her and that like made her stop for a second. It was like literally in the middle of the street. I was trying to get her. She was trying Holy to run shit. home because she heard a motorcycle and she was like, Nope, I'm going home. So she starts running home. And I was like, my first instinct was chasing her. And then I was like, No, wait, turn around. Like I just threw the ball at her and she like stopped for a second. I was able to grab her. But oh my gosh, yeah, that's scary. I hate when those things happen. This was before Target. (laughs) Damn. Okay, so somebody said, um, like, when it comes to training and you have somebody that you're co-parenting this dog with, it can be hard when you disagree on training styles. So have we experienced any differences in opinions on training styles or dog parenting with um, your partner and kind of what to do when you're more of the dog person and your partner likes dogs but isn't, like, a dog person? Do you have thoughts on that, Brittany? Have you experienced that? If not, I can go. I feel like Joe and I are in the same boat with like how much we love dogs. So I don't have any advice on that side of it. But I definitely think that you have to be like we have not been on the same page before of like how often we need to train or like practice things. And, you know, one easy way that we've like kind of incorporated it is like going on walks together. And, like, each taking turns with Rosie. So, like, I'll do, like, five minutes. He'll do five minutes. And then we, like, practice something else. So we, like, are getting it in. But that has been, like, the hardest thing is, like, figuring out, okay, like, have you done training today? Or, like, have I done training today? And getting in a rhythm and routine on that. Um, And then just sharing. I think also, like, at one point, you know, I've just – I've obviously, like, been exposed more to, like, the dog Instagram world of like different types of training styles. And so when I like wanted to switch to more relationship based stuff, I had to just like share the rationale behind it and like have the trainer talk to Joe as well. 
um to explain that and that helped a lot yes that is such a good tip <laughs> I think it, it was like the same for us because uh yeah we agree on like the dog person thing it was different because like he grew up with the dog but the dog like wasn't allowed in the bedrooms or on furniture and things like that where my dogs were all over the fucking place and jumping on counters and hair everywhere and all that um so he wanted to crate train and everything and have them sleep in a crate but literally the first night Finley came home he took him out of the crate and put him in our bed (laughs) so after that happened it was just he's been in our bed ever since um but we did like just I'm just way more of a like lenient person I guess so like a lot of behaviors that didn't even bother me um will bother Cameron and like he wants to fix them and I'm like it didn't bother me at first so that was a big communication thing is like discussing the like demand barking for example or whatever like where I can tune it out more or I'm like man it's fine or whatever like no that can actually be an issue so like communicating when we want to fix things and how to go about it and like with the e-caller thing it was very much like you said like I feel like I'm so much more involved in seeing all these different training styles and talking to trainers and like seeing all of that on Instagram where he's not seeing any of that so like he's just going based off his own experience that Mm -hmm. he's had in the past or whatever um so getting a trainer was like life-changing for that in our relationship because it was like having like a couple therapists be like no this is what is right or this is what you should be doing and there was things I was wrong on and things that he was wrong on so it like forms it so you're able to like decide on the things together um and I feel like it's literally so much like it helps you prepare so much for human children like I feel so much more prepared for the like stressfulness of newborn stages or figuring out how to parent and making like parenting decisions because of all the decisions that you have to make for dogs. Hmm. Interesting. I never really thought of that. Didn't somebody ask about um, dealing with when your partner doesn't really like dogs or doesn't really like your dog and how to go about that? Yeah, that's what I just read. Or like, no, okay. from another episode, there was some. Yeah, but then somebody else said something about like their actual partner or something not really liking dogs, and I just had something to say about that. Like, if it's let's say you're getting into a relationship and you already have a dog and your partner, it's not a co-parenting dog. I just think it's really important to set boundaries with your dog and your partner. Because I just have an example of this with my younger sister who has a very high energy doodle and my, it's fine because it's family, but like my sister kind of just lets her dog jump all over people and like, Mm -hmm. like her dog will literally just try to hold my arm in her mouth and lick my (laughs) face and just like put her face in my face all the time. And I think it's important as a dog owner to not let your dog do that. Because not everybody likes that, you know? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So training your dog not to jump on and sit on people's laps if they don't like it. Because my sister's like, she just wants to say hi. And it's like, yeah, I (laughs) get that. But some people don't want to (laughs) say hi to your dog. You know, some people don't want your dog licking their face. No yeah. offense, Logan, but <laughs> <laughs> no, but that's so true. That's I think even if you're deciding on getting a dog together, that you should still communicate those things because that's exactly like because Cameron grew up a certain way and I did. I had these expectations for having a dog like, yeah, that's going to be taking it out every day. We're going like anytime we go to restaurants or out on events, we'll bring our dogs. And like he didn't ever experience that. Mm-hmm. So like in his head, he just didn't think that that would be happening which like makes sense so like definitely talk to your partner when you're deciding about getting a dog like not only about breeds and things like that and what fits your lifestyle but how the dog will fit into your lifestyle yeah the whole time and like plans for even when you plan for having kids and stuff like you need to think about all of that and not give your dog away once you have children please oh my god that happens so often (laughs) it's my biggest pet peeve yeah what about advice for socializing your dogs? And maybe we should like define what we like feel like socialization is too. Yeah, good, good start. Because uh, also at Petco, we signed Finley up for their socialization classes, which I actually think was good um, because they 
just have dogs that haven't had all their vaccinations yet. And we did a same, we did a play group thing with Sadie also when she, before she had her vaccines. Um, and that was helpful because there's somebody constantly like monitoring the play and making sure that the dogs are behaving properly together and not like teaching them how to play appropriately. Um, but yeah, socialization is definitely not just socializing with other dogs. It's more about experiencing all sorts of environments and yeah, whatnot. Which did not know that at all. <laughs> I like heard the terms just like socialization. I was like, oh, we need to take her to the patio with us and we need to like, you know, because that's what it sounds like. Dog. Yeah. <laughs> like, but it's like, it's but then like we like started exposing her to like, you know, different sounds and different like things in the city like there's just so many things to experience um and it definitely like helped a lot just building confidence yeah even just taking your dog to sit by a noisy street or something just to like get them used to it like will is afraid of loud cars but that's a new thing so that's so interesting (laughs) i i wish that like i would have like understood dog behavior just a little bit better because rosie never really liked dog parks like there was a, occasionally like a few dogs at the dog park that she liked playing with, but like there was a lot of time where her like tail was tucked, it, ears were pinned back, and she was like mm. getting the fuck out of here, and we yeah just didn't know what we didn't know. Dog parks are rough. Yeah, for us it was the same. Like, I would go to the dog park every single day with Finn, like every single day, and the dog parks here are big, like. It is different than at least what I experienced in Arizona. It's like a little thing in dirt. It's like a mm-hmm. chain link fence and some dirt. Here yeah. it's like literal acres that some yeah. of the parks are. So those ones, we still go to one that's like literally a thousand acres. It's kind of mm-hmm. crazy. Um, but I used to go to like smaller ones with Finn every single day. And he always played well with other dogs. So I didn't like experience anything like negative from it besides all the time like other dogs would be getting in fights it's like you're walking around the dog park and you just hear rah, 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 rah. <laughs> like, yeah it's terrifying yeah um and then once we got sadie and then i started bringing her to the park she didn't really know how to play with dogs and stuff and she was like not doing well and then that's when we stopped going to dog parks mm-hmm. and realized that they're not the greatest um and she also did Because she didn't know how to play with dogs and she barks the whole time that she plays, basically. Willow does that too with a ball. Nonstop. Uh huh. Yeah. So she, if it's chasing dogs with a ball with anything, Mm -hmm. she'll bark the whole time. Um, But that's like a herding instinct. Yes. (laughs) So what we did for her, she went to puppy school twice a week for like six weeks, I think, or maybe 10 weeks or something. And it was the best. Like, literally, it was, like, daycare. And we'd drop her off the whole day. Uh, but they would just train her the whole day. Like, she wasn't just in a room with a bunch of dogs doing whatever they wanted. It was, like, mm-hmm. each dog was in for, like, some specific training. So they would have her practice place training and watching other dogs play and not barking. Oh. And then, like, having her join the group, not bark, and putting her back in place when she started barking and stuff. So it was, like, we were getting the training with that. Like, I would just be home working, and she would just be, like, getting hours and hours of, like, practicing that. So that helped so much. And then, like, in the off days, I would take her outside of the dog park, and we'd go 100 feet away from it and practice her not barking. And then we'd get closer mm-hmm. and practice her not barking and whatever. Hmm. And it's helped, like, a ton. Yeah. That's cool. Yeah. Also, there's socialization. Like, there's so many YouTube videos of that you can play of noises and yes. whatnot, ca- like sounds, fireworks, cars, all that. That's such a good one, Maggie. Um, especially because you can't like always predict all the random shit that happens. Yeah, like just like city noises and just like have them listen to yeah. it while you're they're in the living room and in place or whatever when they're a puppy. That's so good. Okay. Well, let's do this one. My dog is so jealous of my new kitten. Tips on cohabitating with a dog and cat. So a lot of people ask me this. You guys obviously yeah, no, don't that's have a great experience one. with that. But um, yeah. I would still love to know because Finley always barks at cats. But when he's met one in person up close, he didn't bark. Yeah, that's probably just like he needs exposure to, to seeing cats that. in the distance and like rewarding when he's not barking. But my dog is jealous of my new kitten. So I, when I 
it's easy getting bringing a new kitten into your household with a dog because kittens are so like adaptable like the kitten will grow up with a dog and not be afraid of the dog which is nice whereas if you bring it's a harder puppy to bring a dog into a house with a older cat the cat's gonna be pissed and oh, that's gonna hate the dog probably but you just need to set boundaries with your dogs because i don't know how to train a cat but you know making sure your dog knows place and training your dog, like rewarding your dog when they don't chase the cat and stuff like that. Um, in regards to your dog being jealous of the cat, I, Willow does that too. Like whenever Charlie comes on my lap, Willow has to be on my lap too. So I don't really know how to prevent jealousy, but just like rewarding them for behaving around the cat is probably my biggest tip and giving your cat adequate space to hide from your dog if needed yeah that's what i've seen is like a lot of people give their cat like a room or something where the dog's like not allowed yeah or just having like cat trees where your cat can get up in a way oh that's and stuff cute. like that that's cute have you had like problems with that or has it always been good willow always i like i can't get a handle on willow not chasing the cats and since I don't know if your dogs do this, Maggie, but since Willow's like a herding dog, she like has keywords where if she hears them, she like goes and chases it. Like so what? like whenever I say one of the cat's names, she chases after the cat. She barks and oh, goes and gets the cat. That. Oh, that's so interesting. So yeah, I still have issues for and sure. And then your cats but... like don't like it being yeah. chased. Yeah. But my cats can usually like jump up and get away from her. That's kind of cute, though. Like she's just trying to play. <laughs> yeah, she's trying. She's like bossy. <laughs> it's adorable. Have you either of you taken your dogs to like a herding class? Or, no, like, I, I want to do though. that, but I also don't know if it would make it like worse. I feel like it would just make them so happy. Mm-hmm. Probably Caroline would from do Dog Mom mentality did it, and it was so cool to just see the like natural instinct. Yeah, I would love to do that with Willow. There's one like an hour away or something. It's like $150 though. But yeah, I've de- I definitely want to do that. That'd be cool. Um, another one, when is the right time to get a dog or get a sibling for your or get another dog or get a sibling for your dog? That's Maggie, not a question. <laughs> you have experience on that. But like the thing is that you have to realize is like If you're looking at it in the way of getting a sibling for your dog or a friend for your dog, you're not looking at it the correct way. Yeah, no. You have to want a second dog because you want the lifestyle of having two dogs, not because you want a friend for your dog. Like, if I got a second dog for Willow, it'd probably just create more chaos in her life. Like, she wouldn't be like, oh, yay, I have a friend now. She would be like, who the heck is this intruder stealing my space, you know? And so that'd be require be training a puppy and also training Willow to cohabitate with a new dog. And then you have to think about it's double everything, double the dog food, double the vet bills, double the toys, like just it's double the work. Yeah. And honestly, it usually ends up being more than double. (laughs) Yeah. So we are like planning right now is like, we haven't really like finished our training right now with Rosie. So we know, like, we're not ready to commit to training another dog yet. Yeah. Um. Until probably, like, at least another year because we just – we're, like, not in a good rhythm with training Rosie yet. So it's, like, why would we add this stress and frustration of, like, a puppy that needs to be fully trained? Yeah. For so sure. the right time is when you are ready and you want a second dog. It doesn't really have anything to do with your dog. Yeah. And I think it's same. It's kind of the same exact thing for deciding to get one dog versus two dogs. Like, yeah, you gotta, I think the biggest tip or biggest thing is thinking about their entire lifespan. Like this isn't a five-year thing. Like this Mm -hmm. could be an 18 year thing. Um, so just really try to picture your life, picture all the things that could happen to you in those 18 years, how your lifestyle can change, what you, what your life plans are, and how the, that dog or dogs could fit into those plans. Mm-hmm. And yeah, double everything. Double money, double if I buy a topple or something, I need two of those. If mm-hmm. I, when we go on vacations, I have to pay double boarding, 
double I I wouldn't have two dogs if I didn't have Cameron I mean if we mm-hmm. broke up or something then I would have both of them and I planned for that <laughs> like you got to plan <laughs> for everything yeah. but like it's it helps to be able to like we each have one dog you know when we go out to do anything we each have one dog um yeah it's just double everything so you have to be prepared and think about if you're really ready for the lifestyle of having two and I think like we when we got Sadie like how you're saying with Rosie like Finn wasn't trained obviously he was like nine months old so he wasn't at like a place that we wanted him to be but we wanted the lifestyle of having two who were both puppies and training them together and fitting in the time to train them together if that makes sense yeah okay so a big big topic that people were talking about is kind of the dog mom guilt and I think that's especially a thing with social media and dog Instagram is you're constantly seeing all these dog people go out on these adventures or buying these products or using certain things or training certain ways and then you kind of feel like you have to do it also. And then also there's people who come into your DMs or swipe up on your stories or something and tell you that you're wrong or judge Ugh. you for the way that you're parenting or doing things. I um, hate that. Yeah. So do you guys have any tips on w- feeling that judgment and when people judge you or try to like getting offended when strangers talk poorly or criticize your pet um, or just dealing with not basing your life around everyone that you're watching on social media the getting offended when strangers like criticize or like talk poorly is so hard like to kind of like separate out like it's their it's they're talking from like their experience they're talking like from what they think that they know like they don't know anything about you and like your circumstance like similar to social media like people see a split second of a thing on like instagram like someone saw Rosie shivering and they were like, you should really have a oh coat my God. for her. And I was like, and I was, and I was like, oh yeah, like, you know, thank you. Like I, I do need a coat for her. Like that is something we made a mistake on. And then they like said another comment that was like, just kind of like shoving the knife in a little deeper. And I was just like, I, I just said you were right. Like what's, what's the like point in adding on to it? Some people get so much validation for like correcting you. Yeah, or telling sure. you what you're doing wrong. I don't understand that because I'm not that way. But people used to, I, I mean, I still get comments of people saying like that Willow was in pain when she howled while she was eating. Yeah. Which, first <laughs> of all, they saw one five second clip and they literally know nothing about my dog. Like that was a genetic trait passed on from her dad. She's not in pain. So, so some things you can know, like not to get offended because they're just they have no idea what they're talking about anyways and they just want to correct you because it makes them feel good yeah you have to remember they're seeing usually a five second clip yeah but i also think like it is such a like valid feeling because like normally like we're trying our freaking best like we're spending the money we're spending the time like we're doing all the things that we think we're doing right and so it does hurt when someone's like hey you're fucking everything up like you're not doing it right like, yeah, it hurts here. so bad. And you have to think of it like it's the same as human parenting. Like nobody, no mom or dad, I'm sure, feels that they're doing everything right because people are constantly telling you that you're doing it wrong or that you need to change things. But you just can't. You have to like tune it out and focus on your own dog because their dog is different than yours. And what they recommend might not even be the right thing for your dog. Yeah. Yeah. And if comparison is like getting to you, I feel like it's the same. We talk about this with comparing ourselves to other creators, but like muting those people that you're comparing your dog to. Mm -hmm. Because I like, since I've been focusing more on myself on social media, I feel way less like obligated to do a bunch of shit for Willow because I'm not seeing everybody do everything all the time for their dogs, you know? Yeah. yeah like not in a bad way also, but i haven't bought her a bandana or a collar or anything this year because she already has one she doesn't need any more. just like yeah stuff like that the other thing too is like you know sometimes we look up to different people but like we're comparing ourselves so it's like if if you're feeling like those different types of ways or like you're just at a different point in time of your training journey or like their dog is like two years older and they've been training for two years and you have a puppy or like you know, you just adopted a dog, like 
those are people to definitely just like mute out for a little bit and then you can always like bring them back in but you know if you're comparing yourself to somebody that's like unrealistic to you then that's yeah, not every a dog comparison. is different do you guys get dog mom like guilt of feeling like that you're not doing enough or like playing with them enough or exercising them enough or things like that yeah every day yeah all the time I do too Whenever I do feel like I'm not doing enough, though, I try and, like, take a step back and, like, see what I'm doing. And I'm like, oh, okay, maybe I could be taking Rosie on, like, another walk a day or something. And, like, how can I, like, put that into my schedule? Like, how can I, like, do something to make it different? Yeah, I think that's smart, too. I literally was thinking that yesterday because now that, like, I take them to the park and I set a 25-minute timer – now and it's like helpful because I'm setting a timer and it's like cool but then it made me feel bad yesterday I was thinking like damn like like 25 minutes out of the whole day is like their time that they're thriving and I was like that is so sad but then I changed my mindset and I was thinking like okay that's not the only 25 minutes out of the whole day that they're getting attention like literally I pet them probably five hours a day literally Mm -hmm. I play with them also at nighttime I probably throw the ball like 50 times at night. Like there's a lot of other things that you probably do for them that you're not thinking of. But also, yeah, like Britt said, like I was like, okay, maybe I can try to set up an enrichment activity in the afternoons more and like do like implement a few more things. But I think a big thing is just being easy on yourself and realizing that you're doing the best that you can do. And they're a dog and they're very happy that you're their parent and they're probably just thrilled about life and you're giving them the best life possible they're not seeing the instagram no they're not knowing what these other dogs are doing (laughs) should we do one more yes okay so lastly just when you're getting a new dog what are your must-have favorite products what are your favorite dog brands what would you recommend to new owners dog crate (laughs) that's a great train um, um mine is probably like enrichment toys and puzzles yeah. and things uh that like the topple all of west paws toys are really good um but then also the comparison and the money like if you can't afford that those things are very expensive and usually you just need like one kong one topple whatever but you there's a lot of trash too that's what i was gonna tin. say like literally you can use a muffin tin and some tennis falls you can use toilet paper rolls you can use baskets around your house amazon boxes yeah so many things that you don't have to spend money on um but yeah that's probably a big thing i recommend because it really works their brains and makes them tired yeah Yeah. tires them out i think a long line and like a short walking leash like when we got a shorter walking leash it made like training like heel and stuff so much easier because there was like the right amount of slack and then now that i have one a raised bed for place training um we talked about la- for like christmas stuff like biothane like especially as a puppy like you have like cuz we used to just keep the leash on rosie like in the house and stuff to make it easier and if that was like going outside and stuff and getting dirty like biothane is so easy to wash and wipe down yeah you know, wipe down that makes that makes me remember machine washable dog beds because yes. i went through so many dog beds with willow cuz i would just buy like the cheap cute bed on amazon and she'd pee yes, in it same. all the yep. time same so a machine washable dog bed i have a zen den dog bed that i've had for willow since she was a puppy everything is machine washable and some like just pay the extra money for something that's gonna last yeah. forever the other thing i also like have on my like new puppy list is just like a bunch of towels you can designate as dog towels whether it's like after bath time like cleaning up messes cleaning up like muddy paws like just having designated dog towels is a big thing or like if you have towels and you're like let me treat myself instead of the dogs like you can give your old towels to your dog and make them like dog towels Mm -hmm. for sure that's a great tip Um, there are like so many more more things Um, we could talk about but definitely um plaque off i that honestly I've been oh, sponsored by Black Off, but it is honestly like I would highly recommend it for any dog that you're getting or especially a puppy like Sadie's been on it almost her whole life 
and her teeth look better than Finley's like and he just started it oh, wow. like a year old or something um but it's very crazy when I see dogs who are from their same breeder or around their same age and looking at their teeth like the difference is so crazy because like I am not good at brushing their teeth whatsoever like I maybe do once every couple months which is not great but yeah, me too. they look great <laughs> like I really swear by this stuff so I would highly recommend yeah hygiene training thought. like those are things Ooh, yes. yes nail that, trimmers uh, Yes. Nail dr- Dremels, teaching them the right way, how to handle well any type of nail trimming. I just think Dremels are easier. They're less yeah, scary just for me. Letting uh, you touch all over them. Their paws, opening their mouth, brushing their teeth when they're puppies, just mm-hmm. because they need to get used to like having their teeth examined <laughs> for and sure. brushed, obviously. But I like having glass bowls versus that's bougie plastic. No, oh, they were like so cheap on Amazon. Oh, oh, that's probably good. Like I got like a plastic. Set. Bag. It was there's I forgot. Like Dr. Karen Becker, I really like. She does like if you need like go- a good person to follow that's like not extreme in any capacity. She is really phenomenal. Um, and she makes very like easily digestible like posts. So it's like you don't have to read a ton of stuff. She has a book too, but it's like very dense. So I would just recommend following her. Um, but she did a post about glass versus porcelain or ceramic versus aluminum oh. or stainless steel when she said glass was better like oh, wow. for their body like better for like, them for yeah there's something that like the stainless steel is better but like but between stainless steel glass and ceramic plastic stuff the glass was like the best one interesting great uh, <laughs> <yeah>. <laughs> um, this is probably obvious, but like with training treats and stuff, I felt like when we first got Finn, I was constantly, I mean, going through training treats, like nonstop buying those like giant bags. Um, but he gains weight very easily. So I cannot be like just giving him treats all day. So mm-hmm. definitely just using kibble or literally blueberries, like dehydrating any fruit, just boiling chicken, like using food like that more for treat training or for training yeah helps a ton and is- or I rubbing out their too. food like if yeah. he gets one cup of food a day use that kibble as yeah, training exactly. all day but don't uh-huh. add more to it when you feed him longer. yeah exactly. even for like training treats too like if you want like higher value ones instead of so I really like vital essentials um, they have a lot of like dehydrated single ingredient treats. Mm-hmm. Um, I actually buy their kibble packs uh, or not kibble. It's like dehydrated dog food or whatever. But instead, like I think the difference is like $17 for like a tiny bag and like $30 or something, $32 for like a big bag. And they're like already broken up into really, really tiny um, treats and it makes a, dif- a big That's difference. Nice. And they're cool. great for like if you want to put them in puzzles or other enrichment toys too. Um, and I know like a lot of people want to try and like feed more like single ingredient, like less processed stuff and treats are a great way to like incorporate it. Cause I know obviously raw food is very, or like other foods are very expensive. Yeah. Um, I also like another big thing too, for us was I wish we just like switched to raw or like tried raw sooner. Rosie had a million and 10 like issues digestive wise. Like she, wasn't gaining weight like she had giardia like we like went through the ringer and I was so scared to switch to raw and I just wish we would have done it like three or four months sooner than we did Mm -hmm. but it solved most of her issues yeah it helped Willow so much too yeah have you noticed the difference from Stella and Chewy like freeze-dried to the raw food patties no they're essentially the same thing okay but I haven't noticed, like, I can switch between them without affecting her, like, poop or anything. So, they, I guess they they literally are the same because it doesn't mess up her digestion or anything. Yeah, that's great. Oh, this also made me think of another product. A really good vacuum. I like mm. the Dyson, like, cordless one mm-hmm. um, for hardwood floors, but we're still trying to find another one. Yeah, I think um, we need a new vacuum. And also the little green machine from Bissell is like a game changer. 
especially like if you only have like, you know, area rugs in your house and you're only spot cleaning, I could have used that and like saved so much money on like throwing out rugs if I had just that little green machine. Oh, that's amazing. We have a Bessel one, but it's not the green one. Yeah. Yeah, I have like a handheld one, but I'm out of the solution yeah. for it. So I haven't been Same. able to use it. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. Okay, so we also asked you guys to submit some things that you didn't expect about being a dog parent or things that you would have wished that you knew beforehand. Um, so we're just going to read some of those. So that way, hopefully, if you don't have a dog yet, you can be a little more prepared. <laughs> okay. Do you want to take turns? Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so someone said, my advice is getting dog insurance and be prepared to spend money on supplements and stuff, et cetera, which that is so true. I forgot to mention that, but insurance, like I would highly recommend you do that immediately. Get dog insurance. We have lemonade and it's amazing. Yeah, someone asked if it's like worth it or if you should have a savings account or something. I think you should just pay for the dog insurance. Like when you start as a puppy, it's going to be cheap because they you're less likely for your dog to get sick or whatever. But like if something does happen, then they're going to cover a big percentage of the costs. Whereas if you you have a savings account, like you're gonna, still going to have to pay all that money. And it'd be hard to build the savings up like when you're spending those first initial costs on puppy things and stuff. Yeah. It'd be hard. Yeah, yeah. I think pet insurance is definitely worth it. My dad had to like drain his retirement trying to save one of his dogs so Jeez. how much do you guys have... pay a month so we can just kind of share ours is 23 per dog i think mine up went up to like 28 or something we used to have At... true panion it was 75 <gasps> what the heck per dog is how much <laughs> that's 75 insane. per dog and they didn't cover anything ever no, you That's can definitely insane. look around. I have Pets Best and the deductible is high, but the monthly payment is low. So like, I know I have $1,000. So if something happens, I can cover the deductible. But then if Willow needs surgery or something, they take care of the rest of it, you know? Yeah, that's same with Lemonade now. It's like any accidents, injuries, or illnesses they'll cover. And our deductible is only like 150 Yeah, that's really good. That's insane. I need to get a new insurance after leaving my company. Mm. Oh, yeah. That's also you can look through your work. Uh, I don't think a lot of people know that. Um, A lot of people get dog insurance through their employer. Yeah. And then it's not. And then it's like pulling it out pre-tax, which is really nice. Yeah. Normally. It's cool. That's at least how mine was. Okay. Want me to read the next one? Yeah. Research slash know your breed because you can never know too much. and. Yeah, you need to know what to expect. Yeah, yeah when you're sure. expecting. <laughs> and the, should write a whole book on that. What to yeah. expect when you're expecting a puppy. And one of the uh, next ones says though that you can do all the research, and some things will still catch you off guard. And that's yes. true. So even though you're doing all the research, there's still things that it'll shock you. Yeah. yeah. Uh, no two dogs are the same training wise, life personality may be different so don't get discouraged great advice very true always have some kind of hard toy or teething toy available to prevent biting with puppies like Britt said don't assume all dogs are friendly some might need training etc that's like a public p- like a psa for anybody mm-hmm. that's like my biggest change though like i used to be the person who would try to pet every single dog and mm. that I saw in public and now yeah. I like have to stop myself yeah um the dog hair everywhere yeah that's what made me think of the vacuum I was like oh shoot get a vacuum <laughs> <laughs> yeah the hair is everywhere always and some lint rollers yeah we have yes. those like giant lint rollers too they're like very big <laughs> I love those <laughs> like they could go on your bed and stuff oh nice um how much patience you need to have Yes, so much. So much. And like, I feel like it's good to just separate yourself sometimes when you feel like you need more patience. Um, Because especially when I first got the dogs, I would get like so overwhelmed and like frustrated and yell and stuff. And it's like kind of pointless. So you yeah. can just separate yourself for a minute, take some deep breaths. 
yeah. um, the amount of money you have to spend to be a good dog mom and get all the things that everyone else has and the guilt that can come with it, feeling like you're not doing enough for them. How long the puppy phase lasts. <laughs> yeah, this is so true. Like I thought at a year old, like they'd be good. And a year old was like when more problems started. Like that was like their teenage uh-huh. got rebellion. <laughs> yeah. I would say like Finn turning three, that's when things like settled. Yeah. Willow's getting real. Yeah, I think at three, Willow started getting much better. Rosie's still crazy. <laughs> We'll see. She got a few more months. <laughs> yeah. How? I guess she had like four months. Yeah. I was thinking about that with Sadie the other day. I feel like she's starting to calm down a little bit. Yeah. Two dogs is definitely harder than one, but worth it. I agree. Mm-hmm. Um, <laughs> the random crying that happens when your dog gets older. Oh, God. So true. Yeah. <laughs> It's, like, very hard for me to to not think about, like, almost every single day, probably. I'm, like, holy fuck, like, I only got, like, 12 years left. Mm. Yeah, I can't. Um, How expensive it actually is. Yeah. Definitely having lots of savings for anything. I think, like, the pressure of having to make every decision for them and knowing what's best is also, like, a hard thing, too. Yeah. But you know your dog, so you just have to trust yourself. Yeah, trust yourself. Find a trainer you trust. Find a vet you trust and go to those people mm-hmm. when you need. Yeah. Um, and the last one is it's a lot of times like having a real baby. <laughs> <laughs> that is so true. <laughs> yeah, it's a lot more work than like I feel like when our parents had dogs, they just didn't do any training with them. It was just like. I feel like we are learning so much more and getting a dog is a much bigger commitment than it was. It's like like our parents' generation for me. Like, I don't understand it kind of like, I'm like, why? Like, is it (laughs) because like, I don't understand how our parents didn't do that training and stuff, but like I had good dogs always. Like I had, yeah, I know Well, we have dogs. They weren't going out on like these adventures. They weren't being trained like, but they're still good dogs. And I'm like, yeah, how? Maybe it's just having such high energy working dogs is the difference. Yeah, maybe. Yeah. Probably also just luck of the draw, too. Yeah, probably. I feel like sometimes mutts are, like, a little better behavioral. I don't know. My sister's got a Malinois German Shepherd, and that thing is not easy. Oh, well, those are, like, the hardest breed ever. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. Some no, that's, that's the right very mutt. hard. Okay. Is that all? Yeah. Yeah. We'll have okay. to do a part two. Yeah, we're definitely gonna have to do a part two of this and dive more into dog parenting. <laughs> we're so low energy right now, like I'm just trying <laughs> to like gain like the momentum <laughs> to do an outro, honestly. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, yeah, we'll definitely do a part two on this. So let us know if you have any more questions. We will save your questions. If we didn't get to your question this time, we have them all written down. So we'll get to it the next time. Um, But yeah, thank you guys so much for listening. We'll talk to you next week. Make sure you subscribe to us wherever you listen to podcasts and on YouTube, like our videos, leave a comment, do all the things, (laughs) follow us on Instagram and TikTok. Anything else I forgot? (laughs) I think you covered it all. (laughs) All right. Well, we love you guys. We'll talk to you next week. Bye. 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 My mouth Uh, is like dry from talking so much.